This is when I was waitressing at a, a fairly big restaurant in Orange County, and he was, um, he was a cook in the kitchen. I think he like asked me to like watch a movie one day or something while I was picking up materials downstairs. It was all very like romanticized at the time. We were both like broke. When we first moved out to Long Beach, I actually filed for unemployment and uh, we got like food stamps and stuff. We didn't even have a refrigerator to begin with, so we had to go grocery shopping for every single meal. And it doesn't seem that hard, but it is. And it takes a lot of time out of your day. I would say that it started going downhill when he was unemployed because he started drinking heavily. I would give him like money, you know, so that he could buy lunch during the day while I was at work. Instead, he would like go drinking with his friends. It got really, really, really bad on Thanksgiving. In the middle of the day, he texts me a photo and it is a photo of him um, cutting his arms. When I was younger, I had issues with suicidal tendencies and, and he knows this. For him to be making this kind of gesture was really huge to me. I drive there and it's like very early evening at this point. I took his pocket knife and I cut my arm. And it's, uh, it's still, the scar is still there because it was deep. We kind of have a heart to heart after that. And, and things seem to be mellowing out. We kind of make an agreement that he will stop doing that and walk me home from work, especially when it's late at night. At this point, I had to change my cell phone number too uh, because he didn't trust me. So I deleted my Facebook, changed my phone number. I would give in to him a lot because you know, he was my whole world at that point, and I was trying to make him happy. I had gotten off of work and closed up the restaurant, and it was maybe like 10 or 11 o'clock, and I was still in a really pissy mood because I was going home to my pissy boyfriend. And so I had my headphones in, and they were just blasting music. Someone grabs me. I'm kind of like, I'm already angry, you know, at my relationship and my life. He was like, give me everything you have. And I was like, the fuck? I was like, get your fucking hands off me. And he um, punches me a few times, especially the top of the head. And I'm not letting go. And I think he realizes that I am screaming now. A small group of guys starts running down the street. So he books it. You know, they're like, do you want to file a police report? I'll make the call. Like, what do you need? Like, where do you live? You know, like, we'll make sure that you get home okay. We'll walk you home. And the first thing that pops into my mind is that me arriving at my apartment where my boyfriend is with three guys that he doesn't know would just set him off. I just sit there and I smoke a cigarette and I just start crying. So I was like, I'm stuck in this relationship where my boyfriend won't walk me home from work. Um, and I'm afraid to be walked home by people because my boyfriend is so jealous. I packed up my skincare and my toothbrush and I put it in my backpack. And um, on the train, on the way to LA, I texted my homegirl. I asked her if it was chill if I, um, if I stayed with her over the weekend. And she was like, yeah, no, sounds good. We went like shopping, because uh, I didn't bring any extra clothes. And at that point, my homegirl is like, why don't you just move in with me? And this is like literally a like 420 square foot studio. No, I can't do that. You know, this is your space. And she was like, look at me, I'm a fucking wreck. And I was like, oh, okay. I, like, I think we both need this then. I go back to Long Beach, I sneak in, grab a bunch of my stuff, and I move in. I mean, even then it was like really cramped, but it was, um, it was freeing too, you know, to be away from him.
I mean, that was kind of it. And what's crazy is that uh, he has a kid now. Yeah.